Karen Cushman. Karen Cushman was born Karen Ann Lipsky in Chicago, Illinois on October 4, 1941 to Arthur and Loretta Lipsky. Little Karen loved Chicago with its winter snow and summer lightning storms. But especially the walks around Chicago that her grandfather would take her on. Karen has one sibling, a younger brother who was born in 1944. She discovered the joys of books at an early age. It was Karen's love of reading that helped her get through the uneasy transition of her family's move from Chicago to Los Angeles when she was only 10. Karen was very unhappy about the move. She thought Los Angeles too hot and she missed her grandparents terribly. In Los Angeles, Karen frequented the local library. She was an avid reader, reading whatever she could get her hands on. From Little Lulu to Rufus M and Middle Mofat or Mad Magazine. Karen also enjoyed writing. As a child, she wrote a six-chapter book that was only three pages long. A poem based on the life of Elvis Presley entitled The King. Another time she wrote a play titled Jingle Bagels, where Santa Claus goes down the wrong chimney on Christmas Eve and ends up in a Jewish home during Hanukkah. Karen would become consumed by a topic or subject whether it was fiction or nonfiction, and then read everything and anything she could get her hands on about that particular subject. Among her favorite books were Cotton in My Sack and A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. Growing up, Karen aspired to be a ballerina or a movie star, or a librarian, or an archaeologist, depending on what she happened to be reading at any particular moment. She has said that growing up, the thought of becoming a writer never occurred to her, because she didn't know that writing could be a real job. Karen attended private Catholic schools from elementary through high school, where unfortunately she was unable to find any real outlets for her creativity. In 1959, after finishing high school, Karen entered Stanford University on a scholarship. She's quoted as saying, What a change from Los Angeles. It was the first time I realized I didn't have to get married and do laundry and spend my life making bologna sandwiches for my kids' lunches. At Stanford, Cushman earned a degree in English and Latin. After graduation in 1963, Karen returned to California where she met her future husband, Philip Cushman, while working at Hebrew Union College as a clerk administrator. Karen and Philip fell in love and married on September 6, 1969 in Orange, California, in Karen's parents' backyard. After marrying, the couple decided to move to Oregon, where Philip worked at a local college as a professor. It was during this time that Karen gave birth to her only child, Leah Karina Katie Shoshana Starshine Cushman was born on March 27, 1973. The Cushmans returned to California soon after the birth of their daughter. Karen returned to school and received her master's degree in human behavior in 1977, and later another master's degree in museum studies from John F. Kennedy University, where she later went on to teach museum studies for about 10 years before deciding to become a full-time writer. As an adult, Karen had always had these great ideas for stories, but would never put pen to paper. Finally, one day, after listening to his wife's great ideas for years without her developing any of them any further than verbalizing them, Philip refused to hear about Karen's latest story, unless, he said, she wrote it down on paper. Cushman has said that watching her daughter and her daughter's friends, growing up she began to wonder what it might have been like for young girls in other times past having to deal with their own struggles. Also, Cushman had always been intrigued with medieval times, not with kings or queens or royalty, but with the clothes and colors and lives of ordinary people of the time. 
Cushman writes about strong young women trying to find a place in the world for themselves. And so Catherine was created. The year is 1290, and Catherine is a 14-year-old English girl who, at the request of her older brother Edward, starts writing in a personal journal about her day-to-day -day life. Catherine is a willful, intelligent, rebellious, compassionate young lady who refuses to be forced into marrying Shaggy Beard, a rich, old, disgusting man who her father is determined to marry her off to. This book, like all of Cushman's books thus far, brings to light the lack of power and choice that young girls had in the decisions of their own lives. Catherine, called Birdie, was named a Newbery Honor Book in 1995 received a Golden Kite Award, was recognized as an ALA Booklist Editor's Choice, a notable children's book in language arts, and has received other awards and recognitions. While writing Catherine Call Birdie, Cushman got the idea for another book, also set in medieval times. The Midwife's Apprentice, which Cushman says was her favorite book thus far to write, was published in 1995. This book is about a young girl who is roughly 12 years old, and is set around a very similar village or area at around the same time as Catherine from Catherine Call Birdie, but dealing with a lower social class, leading the reader to believe that the two main characters, Catherine and Alice, may have known each other. The Midwife's Apprentice is about Alice, whose name changes from Brat to Beetle and finally to Alice reciprocally with the development of Alice's understanding of her own self-worth. She's a young, homeless girl who struggles to find a place for herself in the world. Jane, the midwife, though short-tempered and a bit harsh, allows Alice to live with her. In exchange, Alice must labor under the midwife as her servant. As time goes on, Alice gains knowledge and confidence in herself, and like Catherine, manages to carve out a place in the world for herself. The Midwife's Apprentice received the 1996 Newbery Award, was recognized as a Horn Book Fanfare Selection, was listed as an ALA 1996 Best Book for Young Adults, was one of the school library's journal's best books of the year in 1995, as well as receiving many other awards and recognitions. The Loud Silence of Francine Green, published in 2008, is a little different than some of Cushman's other work. Although she's about the same age as Cushman's other protagonists, 13-year-old Francine is not outspoken or rebellious or strong-willed. She prefers to stay in the background of life to avoid getting into trouble, especially at the very strict all Saints school for girls that she attends. That is, until she meets the new girl at school, Sophie Bowman. Sophie is everything Francine isn't, but maybe sometimes wishes she was. Sophie's outspoken, she questions authority, and is passionate about things Francine hasn't given a second thought to, like free speech, and communism, and atomic bombs. Although they are very different from each other, Francine and Sophie become best friends. Because of her friendship with Sophie, Francine is forced to deal with serious topics like communism and fairness, and she comes to realize that her thoughts and opinions do matter, and so does she. The loud silence of Francine Green's awards and honors include a Parents' Choice Silver Award, a New York Public Library 100 Titles for Reading and Sharing Recognition, the ABC Children's Booksellers' Choice Award, as well as many others. Cushman's other work includes The Ballad of Lucy Whipple, Matilda Bone, Rodzina, and Alchemy and Maggie Swan. All are about young girls who are forced from their homes to embark on various adventures. This shared theme probably has something to do with Cushman's own unwelcome move as a child from Chicago to California. Karen Cushman's books are historical fiction for young adults. They all seem to share the general message about empowering women to stand up for themselves and find or create their own paths in lives. Cushman cites her heroes as Jane Addams, Eleanor Roosevelt, and the award-winning author Jane Yolen. Cushman says that creating and writing about these characters has helped her explore and learn about herself. Karen and her husband, now reside on Bashan Island in Washington, where she plans to keep on writing until she's a hundred years old. Corpus Bones, my tale has come to its end.